good biz bill here again. The plow been working on for over two years. I called it whenever because I didn't have no idea when I'd finish it. It is finally finished. It's not painted yet, but it's ready to go for, to the field for field testing. And here is whenever. This plow is built out of two international 560 semi mount plows. They're 14 inch bottoms. And um, we're done. I'm gonna go, go and tell you, I'm bringing up start the back and I'll work my way to the front telling you what done to build it. I needed this back wheel here, I needed to be a caster. So all I did, this is the same thing on the international semi mount 560 plows or 500 series plows. I just took the stem out of here. This wheel here is off of an international 200 press drill. I had to add just a little bit to it, but it fitted, it was two inch shaft, it fitted in there perfectly. This come from um, Sam's equipment in uh, uh, Minnesota. I'm trying to think of the little name of the town, uh, but I can't think of it right now. Dawson, Minnesota is where it come from. This, uh, all these backbones, I, I changed them out. These are four by six tubing. They were the, the box channel. I like the looks of them, and uh, especially up front, I need more strength up there for that. And of course, you can see the hydraulic tubing for the hydraulics here. These two, these two here, I made them with quick disconnects because when I go to a plow day, I've got to separate these plows to haul them. And this, this plow will turn like a helicopter. These chains here will limit the, the turning on it. It'll turn just like something like an international plow. Uh, this is the same hitch as on the 560 plow. And uh, the actual hitches down here, it's a fast hitch. Uh, they come off of uh, the farm all one point fast hitch tractors, 130, 140, some of those. Yeah. And of course, this is, I had to add this on here to the side, going over there. That's why I wanted to beat that up over there. And these, these right here were made, these level the plow left and right. Not sure yet till I get in the field because these plows, the, these plows, the characteristic of them, let's talk to my friends out there in the Midwest that has some of these plows, the characteristic all of them want to roll to the right because of the way the center wheel works. They don't have any trouble with it because they got that big hitch goes out to the side and they hook to the tractor and it holds it down. Now I wanted to use a semi mount so uh, to help, we wanted to raise the hitch up what it wants to do. Uh, when you pick it up, you set it in the ground, the weight goes back the other way, no problem. But I put this on here to help counterbalance that a little bit. I'm gonna find out what I can get away with. If I need them, they'll stay on there. If not, I'm gonna take them off. This right here, come off an international 800 plow. Um, a friend of mine in Minnesota found this for me, Tim Kretz. Um, found it at Walgreens in, uh, in Walgreens, Minnesota. And that's what got that shipped here. This, this plow, these plows here had about a, you know, four, five, six inch, whatever it is, difference in the, underneath the, the beam to what the plow that this was, the 800 series plow. So what I had to do was cut this resting plate and drop down. You can see how much the international one they had, it was up to here. I dropped it down to here. And eventually, after I do my field testing, I think it's okay to cut it off, but I'm gonna cut it off and drill another hole through here and bring that down. I just think, don't really need to do it, but I think it would just look better. And they use 1100 or 1100 tires, I forgot. I just, I'm just using 670 by 15. Cause see that lowered my height down a little bit too. And I, I needed to lose some height. And uh, of course this right here, what this does, this helps with the supporting this arm coming off from the side, pushing and pulling. And this, of course, this was built to, to give it some rigid, rigidity in here, right here. And you can see all my nice uh, um, steel tubing. I tell you, they they done a real nice job on this, yep. this tubing here. You got to come to the you shop. You follow it all the way out. Yep, the guy that helped me do do all of this stuff here, been helping me weld the plow. He, he worked at a, a place that sells case IH and uh, big spreader trucks and, uh, and sprayers. 
And uh, anyway, he helped me roll a well, a young man. He's really good, really good. And he, um, his dad is an electrician, and his dad had all the tools, yeah. the, the pipe bench, the, the threader, and the uh, um, bender. And he came up here last Sunday, we did it. And we bent all these stuff, things just like that. He, he was, he had his act together, that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, you, you see my coulter, shanks are on here now and the reason i put yeah. them on that so we, we make sure we're not in the way with the tubing to uh when i wanted to put my cultures on yeah that's what we did and this toolbox right here believe it or not come off of 1206 and before my my tubing uh, i mean my, my toolbox my trouble was these tools are under my feet in the tractor cab and i'm tired of it so anyway i mounted a toolbox on my plow and I've got some more plows out there. I've got two more toolboxes. I'm going to put on some other plows. But anyway, this has had a lot of, a lot of torque in this area right here. This tube was holding it fine. But anyway, I, said, I think I just want to give it a little more strength. So I did that, and that, that you don't see it torque anymore. Now up here, this, this front furrow wheel, which I was trying not to, to put on here, but I found out it just wouldn't work without it. This, this comes from uh, well, also Sam's equipment in uh, Dawson, Minnesota. This come off a white plow. Yeah. And you notice we had to compensate because it, uh, on a white plow, this here would be up here because of the height difference in the frame. So we had to drop it down and, we, and needed some more support here. So I just added another one right there and that cured that, that problem. I tell you, that's oh. some welding on. Huh? I said, that's some welding there. Yeah, he, he got his act together. Yeah. But anyway, this two here had to be lowered too. It was about four and a half inches or something like that. Lowered this to get this the right height. And what I did, it still won't low enough. Had had to get uh, some more. Well, yeah. this plus this resting plate right here. We took and cut it off this uh, shaft right here, big yeah. two and a half inch shaft. Dropped it down a couple of inches, welded it back. And we had to had to cut some off of this and here this this whole piece come out and we dropped it dropped it down but it worked perfect you'll see in a minute i'm gonna start it and pick it up and down and show you and uh, and i'll move back and forth a little bit i like to go outside with it today but we had big rains here this weekend and was i feel you or whatever the hurricane was <laughs> yeah feel you or something other yeah and anyway i think it's just gonna be too wet all they're gonna do is mess up my yard and I don't think my wife would like that. No. <laughs> I, I have learned something over the years. <laughs> <laughs> so, and right in here now, this is the uh, original on land hitch that I made for the 550 and 560 plows. I didn't change nothing on that. Um, well, I did change right here where it bolts up to it. They had a, a flange that went under it and one on top, but I couldn't do it because of this. And, this right here, I was going to use just a, a gauge wheel like off a of number 70 plow, you know, the axle come out here. Yeah. And that was on there. I just left that right there. And of course, I welded this out here and bolted that down. It's not going to go anywhere. And it's bolted to this too. And the reason I left it, I said, I think I can use that as a place to hook on about lifting it. A good tie down spot. Yeah. Because when I go to plow days, I've got to disassemble this thing and, and haul it. I've got to take my plows. And uh, I'll put this on the front of my little boy, and then on the back, I'll put that up on the bolster, plus I'm going to build a, a rack to set the front of the plow on. Yeah. I haven't done all that yet. But i got to do that and then come back and get the tractor. It's a, it's a lot of work, but I like this kind of stuff. And I don't, I, won't, I don't intend to do it too much. I'm hoping to have it at a plow day this coming uh, 1st of March in Gates County, North Carolina. And in other words, when I get through field testing, then I'll bring it back and disassemble the whole thing, yeah. sandblast each individual part, put it back together, give it another coat of paint, what I'll do, and then it'll be, and then of course, decal it up and she'll be ready to go. Now right in here, this is where I had a trouble. When I picked up the middle, and this too, just, it just wanted to keep right on raising hitch. Now I had this thing on my old farm on them, I got a second all hitch on that, and it's got down pressure. Worked great on that. Uh, use the M set right here to run the hydraulics while well, experiment with this thing because you could just reach up there and touch them. Um, this one here, you had to crawl in and out of the cab. This worked, worked easier. Well, anyway, uh, 
when I put this on here, I knew it was going to go up, so I had to do something. So uh, we did this last Friday night, I think. Made this out, out of a, um, it's a one by three flat bar out of the rail on the plows we had left over to salvage stuff. So we uh, drilled the holes in here and there, and I put this on here in that chain, and I, I've got it marked up there to cab how high I can pick up without, you know, I don't want the pressure on the cylinders all the time or the cylinder breaking out or anything. So I knew how I can come up when it just gets tight, that's all I need. And then pick this up right here, then the plow pick up level. Yeah. And going down, I go down like all, all I want to on this thing. And this is actually off of an internet. This part right here is actually the, the, the receiver part of this shaft. It's actually off an international 700 plow. Um, down here. And what about this green part here now? Yeah, the green part. <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead and confess up to it. I'm going to get blackmailed by some buddies of mine. That is John Deere. And what happened, the international that fitted in here, just like the one on the back, it doesn't yeah. oscillate. And I found out sitting in the, uh, picking this thing up and down, they'd take my whim just about and pick one side of the daggone tractor off the ground. It was going to twist bad. I knew right then it needs some oscillation because out there in the field, yeah. this tractor might be able to stand it, but it's going to put such a tremendous twist on the plow and even the hitch on the tractor. It's just best to have it oscillate. So I found a, what they call a 2350, 2450 John Deere eight bottom plow. And believe it or not, I've been knowing about the plow for 40 years or more. I called a buddy of mine about the plow. He, I, had, I said, you know where he finds a hitch for a 2350 John? Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's uh, about 150, about 100, not that far, about 125 miles in here. And he said, help yourself. And what happened to the plow? The plow, I, I can remember just as good. The plow got sprung years ago. And yeah. they just put it in the bushes and forgot it. And I went up there and got this out of there. And I said, if that shaft was two and a half inches, mine two and a half, it ought to work. Yeah. And when I got there, I measured it was two and a half inches, of course. You know, I got excited. Yeah. And then I couldn't wait to get back home. That thing went right up and fitted perfect. I said, oh my God. And so, what I'm going to do now, though, is the shaft was too long. I'm going to be taken to a machine shop friend of mine. And we're going we're gonna to cut about that much right there, about three inches off of the shaft, and drill the hole back through, and it'll really, really look sharp. Yeah. Now, in defense of well, me taking the John Deere now, this, that will not hold. This John Deere hitch will not hold. It's going to break. So what I've learned to do with John Deere's, you go in and sandblast and get all the paint off of it, and you paint it red, and of it'll course. hold fine. Of course. That's, that's, that's what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do sometimes. <laughs> But no, uh, that, that saved me right much time and right much money. Yeah, that thing was already built, and uh, uh, I'm happy with it, very happy with it. And, this, of course, I'm going to start it up here in a minute. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to go backwards and forwards with it a little bit to show you. And next time, uh, uh, maybe if I'm on 51 here, if you'll come back yeah. next weekend or sometime, we'll have it out in the yard and have it moving around. Just, let, just, just really need to dry up a little bit. The questions. The part on the back you're talking about keeping the down the rear wheel. Oh, down. Haven't done this yet. But what's going to happen? I got to drill a hole through here. And what happens when you're moving these things? If, uh, if you pick them up, this stuff wants to fall down, and it's aggravating about loading. Yeah. So I'll put a, a drill a hole right through here and put a pin in here, and you don't even need the piston. It'll sit right there and hold it up. It locks it in a position. And this one back here. If I want to raise it higher, I put the pressure on this cylinder and I put a bolt between these two here and I raise the whole thing really high. But I got it fixed so I might not even have to do that. If you'll see this hole right here, all I got to do is put this in right here, pick it up and it'll hit that and that, it'll stay up. So uh, yeah. it helps you with your loading is what it does. And the reason I knew that I built a, I built a plow one time, a, a 535 I used to have for competition plowing, and I went to load the thing, and I noticed I had that way it wanted to fall down, because all this stuff is the same thing as on a 535, and I actually took and, because uh, um, this might be hanging over the back of the low boy, I don't know, I actually took a little little small clevis and made a little deal here, and I said I'll make it a little bit better this time. So if it's hanging off, if it, this one, that one was sitting completely on the trail, this one's so long, it might be hanging off. And if it's hanging off, I need some way to lock it. And in 
didn't want to take any chances on the cylinder drifting down. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm all 51. Got any questions you want to ask me? I don't have anything else to tell you. I think that's pretty much. If that's a lot of work. What two and a half years, I guess. Yeah. In the making. Well, Three. July was two years. July, um, August, September. It was like uh, two years, two months. Yeah. Finished all the metal work 10:30 Friday night. Yeah. I can tell you exactly when it was. For about first day of fall. <laughs> I got to get. Uh, I'm heading next week or Monday. Might go tomorrow and get a rim for that. I didn't have a decent full bolt rim. And I'm going to go to Agri Supply tomorrow and pick up a rim, and I'll get another tire that's like on the back and put it like that for the gauge yeah. the gauge wheel. Uh, I don't know anything else to tell you. But I, like I was saying before, I said this whole this whole area here, there's a lot going on. You better believe there's a lot going on there. There's a lot of engineering yep. <laughs> going into this. And, and one reason I wanted this hitch on here too, nothing permanent. I. Uh, <clears throat> I H fixed this on purpose like this for doing tractors with different wheels uh, with the tires and, yeah. and actual settings and you can actually slide this back and forth of course I don't have a tractor but what I want to do is make sure this bottom here is cutting the same width that bottom is there yeah. and it might need some adjustment in and out that's what you want on any plow you want every bottom to be cut to the equal amounts and that's where co I hate coulters they're pain in the neck but if you ever get them set they really help you plowing um, but you set your coulters. I'll start with the back, and I'll get that thing cut in 14 inches. And then I'll, when, I, when I come up to, to, to this one right here, I'd be in the ground. You got to go but a couple of feet. Yeah. Go from here, hook onto the blade, and go over here and check where the blade's at on that one. And then you set you set this one and set them all the same depth. And I think I'm gonna put 20 inches on this one, 20 inch coulters on this one. You you got way. to you've got to get it in the ground, get them coulters going true straight. And then, like I say, then you do your measuring to to get them. You do that. You want to do it like your room. But this is right here. That's the colder lock. To keep it, it yeah. limits the colder and limit left and right. What I do for getting my depth right, I use that and lock it and and get it straight. And then then I don't have to worry about my depth no more. I, I can loosen this up and turn it and not have to worry to hold this up and turn it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's what I'll do on this and you see this hole right here that's for your 17 inch coulters right there you put it up here for your uh, 20 inch coulters even the bar uh, in here is, is a couple inches longer the way they do these things never use 20 I got some 20 inch around here but I, I like a 20 inch coulter but I, I would have to say probably the most probably the difficult thing was just like if I'm all 51 sit right in this area right here yeah because this started, this this was nothing but a four by seven, three eight wall toolbar, is what that is, and that was the first piece that was welded on right here, and then we put that on there, and then of course had to make all, all this stuff had to be made, and anyway, then I got the idea of using the fast hitch back here. I don't know how I did that, but I did. My daddy had a, a lot of international stuff in the day, and we had a brand new seven oh six and sixty five, and I remember this. That hitch and everything, the way it works, is just identical to that right there. And of course, it, in that day, that toolbox right there was the same thing, about the same thing on a, yeah. as on a 706, just a different mountain bracket. The toolbox is the same. I'll start it up here in a minute and raise it up and move forwards and backwards a little bit and show you. It certainly is impressive, I have to say. <laughs> a marvel of engineering. <laughs> like I say, you, you got to have a little bit of engineering sense and... and Probably engineering sense is about 25%. Just being pure crazy is 75%. <laughs> yeah. Something like something like that. Just ask my wife. Hey. <laughs> She'll agree with me.
You notice how nice and level that's sitting right in there? That's across this chain right here. If I didn't have that there, that thing, she'd want to go over like that. Yeah. But like I said, on the, on the international, even the deer plows, all of them, they didn't use a semi-mount. They had the big tongues come out of heavy tongues and went to the triters. And most of them didn't have the hitches on them. They just had standard draw bars. And those old big triters, they'd hold it down. But on those hitches that had come off of here, it was hinged, and they had a cylinder on it. They had this, this cylinder and that cylinder working in concert with each other. And so when you pick it up, it would push the hitch down to keep the plow level. Yeah. And when it back in the ground, it would go back the other way. But I want to try a semi-mount, um, which I'm, I'm very pleased with. I really am. I, I like that. I had a semi-mount uh, 710 IH plow once, and it, it worked just like that right there. And the reason I didn't use the international wheel over there, the international, gosh, you had an axle come over here and you had a cylinder over here. It, to me, it was a whole lot more complex. That one, if you look at it, six bolts hold the whole thing on. Yeah. It was just a whole lot simpler to work with. And I first saw one at a friend of mine in, uh, out in Illinois, a fellow named Albert Warner. I saw, uh, he, when I first started doing this stuff, he was nice enough to show me around. He had some of these old plows sitting around, and I saw that front furrow wheel on one of his plows out there. And I said, that's it right there. That thing would, would be wonderful if I needed it. And eventually I found out I needed it. So this is where we're at. And uh, when I get the thing completely painted up and cleaned up, it's numerous, but I'll, be, I'll tell you everybody's name to help with this thing from the beginning to the end on it. Like I got them from two from Illinois. I got some from Indiana and, oh gosh, Minnesota, several from Minnesota. And uh, gosh, got two different machine shops I use here to help. And I tell you, the, the biggest problem I have with this plow, other than getting stuff here to work with, machine shops now, I, they're having trouble getting help and they got more work than they can do. And I just really had a struggle with that. And finally, I looked up and found this one young man who wanted to help me after working on Saturdays. And he's got all his welding equipment, he's got everything and carbon arc torch you name it and that really worked good for me we didn't work on it every weekend he had to do some things himself sometimes and that was okay with me and I, I couldn't get in the field with it until november even working right now and then like we did i knew i had plenty of time for that so uh, this 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 plow is ready for the field and see what i did i got nine inches of clearance under these front ones and, and the back one this right here this, right here in the center the center has got 12 inches and the reason i did that i guess i was copying the ih thing they got theirs where theirs hump a little bit and the only reason i can think they did that is because if you have uneven land turning around to yeah. go over and i think it looks kind of sharp but it but it uh but it it turned out good i'm, I'm happy the only thing i'm not happy with with this thing i do like these blocks they work good and my guy helped me well in doing it we couldn't get these any other color. <laughs> so here comes the paint can. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, I mean, they don't move. I mean, that they're perfect. What is it, like a some type of polyplastic or something? Yeah, like that? some kind of plastic. And all that is, you got to, uh, I'll show you again. I'm sure a lot of people already know about it. There's your, there's your, there's your plastic right there. And what happened, this goes on the bottom down here. And you just tack, yeah. you just weld them, weld them down yeah. there. And you put that, like that one, let's say it goes on the bottom right here. And you got another one that's like that, it goes on the top. Then you put this cap on there with a the, with the bolt. Yeah. And you're done. They, they really, I mean, they're great to work with. They're about, whew, with the freight and everything, I bought 15 of them. I got, I got about 13 on here and I got a few left, or 12 on here, whatever I got. They were like 150 bucks, but they, they, they were good to work with. Some, sometimes I pay more for maybe parts, pieces, items, which you want, whatever you want to call it. But sometimes they're easy to work with, and you can save money on labor on the other end and time. So, mm. a lot, a lot of trade-offs is all I can tell you. There, you said 14-inch bottoms. They're 14. Yeah, 14-inch bottoms. Mm -hmm. And the welding. Oh yeah, let me. Hold I up. have to say that's that's some right nice welding there. Please here, split. Now let, let, uh, let me show you how I measure a, a plow to find out which, which you, uh, width the cut is. Okay. I just come up here like this and hang it over and look at it. 
the outside of that to the inside of that. That's how I do it. All right. I want to tell you about these beans back here. I'll tell you about all of them in here. I bought, uh, some of y'all probably saw the eight bottom, fully mounted eight bottom I built. I had put one of these on there several years ago. When I got this four, this four by six tube and three eight wall, I bought a 20 foot stick with $400. Well, I had to buy another one for that up there. The same stick of steel was $800. And now I heard it's gone up closer to a thousand. So I wanted to put one on this thing, but I sure didn't want to pay for uh, more stuff. So I had enough tubing where we cut it and stuff to, to make a tube, I need the length I needed. These are not as long as one out there in the other plow. So I took them to a friend of mine over in uh, Sunbury, North Carolina. Young man, only 33 years old. We got a couple guys helping the machine shop. Got some nice tools out there. I took him the original beam off of this thing. And, and anyway, he took it and actually drilled these holes in two different pieces. He drilled this section, then he drilled that section, then he put it together and welded it. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And I like yeah. that when I brought it home, he, he got a CAD system somehow or another. He can put them right where he wants it. Um, anyway, I brought it here and it fitted perfect. Yeah, and this this thing was built 100 miles from here. I tell you, this this and you can't. There's not it. a. There's nothing. There's no. Mm -hmm. It's just as smooth it's, as it is as if it was right here. Yeah, that that that's it's on a 45. Yeah, we did that. We didn't think he didn't think it would break anyway, but we got two bolts over here and two over here to help out. Yeah. That that was very impressive to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. And he's gonna do some more stuff on me. He said these these weights are pretty much going to try to help compensate that. Yeah, that twisting. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to add any more weight if it needs it. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use the hitch to hold it over. Yeah, they're 75 pounds a piece. They're IH weights. Uh, some I got, golly, uh, back in 2002 or so, I think. And uh, I'm glad I got the 75 pounders because me and the 100 pounders don't get along no more. I'm, I'll be 75 here in a few months. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell it too but anyway they, what I built a bracket out of here this this is nothing but uh, one with three flat bar like you see right there that yeah. little salvage plows we built it right out of that and I'm gonna experiment with that if I find out I don't need it it's coming off of there but if I need it uh, it's gonna stay right there but it, you see what I could do the, the way to weight these plows all your plow weight I know a lot of people know this, but those that don't, I'm going to tell you, all your plow weight is really right through here. And what happens, it puts most of the weight right on this side right here. And it actually, you can get on that side. I can, uh, with none of the weights on there, put it on there. I could actually work it inside the, the thing there a little bit and feel it go up and down. So there's hardly no weight on that side. Yeah. And so that's why I put them over there to, to help out. I did have some up here experimenting. I said, this is just getting too heavy. And I got to think of something. And anyway, I found out my OEM tractor with a down pressure on it. We would just push it right down. So there can't be much difference in there with no heavier than yeah. OEM is. But push that. That's what happened. I just put this to the uh, to this plow last Friday night, and we made that top link and got to thinking how to work it, work that thing. And all I know, it 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 works fine. If you notice the plow's up high enough and everything to go around the ends, it don't take up and down much on the hitch. Too much to. Uh, I don't need to go way up high in the air. If I went up way up high in the air like this, it should be over here like this. Yeah. I just wanted the plow to come up level. And also, you said you moved this. Uh, oh, this right here was sitting over here. And then I found out, man, I had a big time problem to the right. So I moved it over about 12 inches to make it long in here. That's been moved, that's been welded and welded on three, moved twice and welded on three times. Yeah. Welded it here, welded it here. And where it's at now. I finally I moved this over as absolutely as far as I could go. And if you look right here, this rail, um, we made that right here in the shop. Had to make that rail so it come over here a little bit further to miss that tire. And that that's that worked fine. Cause that I just I forgot what I made that out of. It was some other rail I had around here because I got the sixth rail for this plow. I just didn't want to mess it up you had that bent didn't you no it bent it right here in the shop yeah yeah i mean the, yeah they bent it in the shop so we had it. to bend it it was straight as an arrow 
we, we bent it. I think it come off an old International 512 plow I had. But anyway, we had to bend it here and we had to bend it right here. And then we clamped this up here and two holes were already in here. We pretty much marked it by these two holes here and then drilled it. Every, by every hole you see was drilled, um, uh, I don't see this drill right now, it's right here somewhere, by um, a magnetic drill. Yeah. We did all that drilling with it, everything. And a hand drill, that was it. Now these big holes right here, these come, from a friend of mine uh, got these for me right here and uh, he was able to help me at first and as life goes, sometimes those things get in your way and you can't do things you want to do. But anyway, he made those for me right there. He cut them out with that steel there and then he burnt the holes in that for me. He's got, you know, one of them CNC machines, or, or, no, what do they call it, a cutting you know, table? Yeah. Whatever that um, table is, they put them on that. He just cut that whole thing out, programmed it, and, pshaw, and cut the holes in there and, put, and we put them rods in there. So you said it was a whole lot of what, what you say, uh, the CFC? Oh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this whole plow was CFC work. It's an acronym for cut, fit, and cuss. <laughs> and I'll leave this up to Farmall 51 whether he wants to put this on the air or not. But a lot of this plow was done by the swag method of uh, estimating what to do. Yeah. That's an acronym for sophisticated <laughs> guess. <laughs> yeah. And that's the way it was done, a lot of it. Done some drawing out and stuff like that. But all I can tell you, there it is. I mean a lot of work. And it's still a lot of work to go because every one of those cultures, there's 12 cultures on that thing. I'm going to make about three extra. There's the hubs right there. And I got, I'm going to get them blasted a little bit better, clean them up. I got to build them. There's the axles for them right there. There's the cubs. There's the box of bearings right there for them. There's the, the lock nuts. And there's the... Uh, there's little uh, bearings that they turn on and there to lock the car to keep them turning so far. Yeah. And all that's got to be cleaned up. It ain't nothing but time. And when I plant this plow the way I'll do it, I'll bring it here like I've done all my stuff. I disassemble it completely. Every last nut and bolt, every last bolt, bolt tight, tap and die, painted individually. Each piece of, uh, of iron on that plow will be uh, sandblasted and it'll get a coat of paint before it's put back together then reassemble and paint it again. I found out it's a lot of work, but it's sure uh, it's, it's pretty close to a permanent solution. Yeah. And you said you may have to change them tires out. These tires. Uh, Since that, that's the you said that was the most weight on the. These are six ply tires. Six ply. And I was hoping to get a six seventy to fifteen. That's all I could get was in the, the six ply, but they're new. Uh, a lot of weight right there. That's why I really would love to get those off of there. But. If they don't work out, I found as a truck tire, I can get this 14 ply. Yeah. <laughs> It'll fit right on that same rim. And if I have to, I'll change them out. Yeah, it might work, but like I say, if it's, uh, it may or I may not cause trouble down the line. <laughs> I know some forklift tires, because I got some back there on a, on a machine. I used to be in the road building business. Yeah. And I wanted a, a 15 inch tire that was pretty stout to hold what I wanted to hold. Anyway, I've come up with a forklift tire. It's about the height of that right there, but it, it, it's it's like that 14 plies or whatever it is on it. It never give any trouble, I can tell you that. Yeah. And it's got like a mud grip type or, you know, forklift tire, you know, on, on a, like you want to run that down the grass. Yeah, yeah you kind want of, something a little bit of grip to it. Same kind of tire. Most of them are good trailer type plow or yeah. plow or implement yeah. tires, I guess. Now look, I'm gonna start it up. I'm gonna move it forwards and backwards and show you the roll. And then next time uh, we're gonna have it out in the yard and can't plow with it just yet, but uh, hopefully next weekend. Got beans out there in the field right now. In the field, I don't think my, the guy farming the farm would like it too much to plow his beans in. And, <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna- You won't missing around the edge, will you? Yeah, around the edge. <laughs> but uh, God, the way the deer worked on it, some of them in the back, I think they're gonna be all right, I had to do a replant on them, but God, deers have been terrible this year. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna, uh, Probably next weekend I'll get it out there in the yard, farm all 51 and get him to come back. We'll, we'll pull it out there because it's so muddy out there now. We just have big rains all weekend. And then we'll uh, let you see a picture of it uh, pulling around, turning, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll bring the drone out then. Yeah. Do some video.
Well, we know that we know it rolls. Yeah. The bearings work anyway. Huh? The bearings work anyway. The bearings work anyway. But that's all right. All yeah. Is. We'll look forward to, we'll see it uh, in action. Well, not plowing, but we'll see it moving around next week. So, okay. So we can do, we'll come down, bring the drone, and take some aerial shots of it while we're filming. And because when it turns, it'll turn just like, like it'll pivot right here. Yeah. Just like the international plow. A deer made on that way, too. And it'll, it'll right in here, everything will pivot. It'll pivot that, that cast wheel will flip and pivot left and right. One thing about these plows, you do not back up with them. Ooh, Nobody yeah. backs up with them. Yeah, I can imagine it. You do a little bit. Well, I just did, but you can do a little bit, but you're not going to do much. Yeah. I can imagine it would not work too well. <laughs> yeah. And no more what I've done right there to see how the plow moved. I, I had these sitting underneath those stands. Yeah. And the reason I'd had them under there when I was working on it, I wanted to keep the plow level. Um, it takes about that three-quarter inch piece of plywood underneath those stands to make the plow level. Yeah. Well, I have nothing else to tell you on it. That's it. All right. Well, uh, we'll catch up with you next week. That'll work. All right.